Uh, just explain then what is a target candidate? Well, my seat is one of the four key target seats that the Green Party is really hoping to win at this general election. Okay. Uh, we're performing brilliantly in terms of what people are telling us on the doorstep and uh, really very glad that the election has been called and full of energy and determination to win this seat and a number of others to be a strong green voice in Westminster. And of course, you, you are not uh, new to elections. You have been an MEP. You served there in the European Parliament before we legged it for the hills. And, you know, there it is. You, you, you know the pressure. You know what it's like to knock on doors and hand out leaflets. You're feeling confident then. The Greens can, for the first time, maybe I know Caroline Lucas has been, you know, doing her thing in Brighton and on the back benches for a number of years now. But can that really increase? Because every time we look at this, and I appreciate the, the voting system we have is against you like it is against many other smaller parties. But there's not been a kind of, there's not been two Green MPs. That's going to change this time around, Ian. I'm absolutely certain of that. Yeah, Caroline Lucas has done an incredibly fantastic job of, you know, representing people in her constituency and representing green ideas, green policies in Westminster. We clearly desperately need more people like that in Westminster. As you point out, our electoral system is not very fair to smaller parties. And that's why, you know, we're really clear that we need to focus on the seats where we have by far the best chance of winning. My seat is one that has been held by the Conservative Party for a very long time. And I tell you now, I'm out knocking on doors day in, day out. I was yesterday, all weekend. Every day I door knock, I meet umpteen people who tell me, do you know what? I've voted blue all my life, but I just can't vote for them again. You know, I've been a conservative, yeah. lifelong conservative, but the country's a shambles. I'm going to vote green this time round. And so in this constituency, we are neck and neck. Well, so which, which constituency are you in? Are you going to North be Herefordshire. North Herefordshire. And who's the current Tory knocking around there? I know you don't want to give them publicity, but... Bill Wigan. Bill Same Wigan. Same Conservative MP for 23 years. And people are really ready for a change. And that's the case, you know, not just in my seat. We've got Adrian Ramsey and Waveney Valley running a brilliant campaign there. Sean Berry, of course, in Brighton Pavilion, um, seeking to continue the brilliant legacy of Caroline Lucas. And of course, Carla Denyer, our co-leader in Bristol Central, which is looking, you know, like a really, really good prospect yeah. for the Green Party. But I mean, so in, in that seat, handful, yeah, sorry, sorry, go on. Just to get a handful of Green MPs, you know, we, we've had one. She's done an amazing job. We're going to get a, a strong core of Green MPs elected this time. And then that will be, you know, a springboard for, for further expansion. Because, you know, you started this segment yourself with saying, you know, our political, our political system, our political discourse, it's not great, right? It's really polarised. There's insufficient space for a range of views. It's so important that we elect new people to Westminster, to, to shake it up, to hold the old parties accountable and to drive forward better yeah. policy because our country really is crying out for change. You know, we're, we're all agreed on that. But is that, and, is that change a green change? I mean, if you look at what happened in 2019 in that seat, you got 4,700 votes. The Tories got 32,150 votes. You've got a <laughs> bit more than a mountain to climb. It's been five years since then. You know, in the local elections last year, we came second across the whole constituency, even though we didn't stand in all the wards. You know, I'm a local councillor here. I've not just been an MEP, but I've been a local councillor for seven years. The area that I now represent, it used to be 80% conservative and it shifted within a few years to 80% green. People's voting intentions are not set in stone and 2024 is so different from 2019. You know, like I say, I know from knocking on doors, we've knocked on 20,000 doors in this constituency alone. And the data shows that we are absolutely neck and neck with the conservative. You know, people are ready for change and in conservative facing seats, historically conservative seats, mm. people are really ready to vote differently and they recognize that voting green is you know a real alternative in places like this and they feel proud to vote green you know they feel pleased to vote green they recognize that we're incredibly hard-working principled effective representatives who genuinely care about the areas that we want to represent and want to take you know principles and values but, into parliament but i mean I, I i get that and i think it's admirable and i i love the idea that we you know we're not a dictatorship i said at the beginning we're not north korea thank goodness lots of different parties there are there and you know when you we, we see the returning officer stand in front of 16 people from you know curiously named parties there's a bit of me that thinks that's fantastic you know people wanted to give it a go however and I say this kindly uh, to you, Ellie, uh, the, the Greens haven't really made the inroads, have they? Because you've got an ongoing manifesto, i.e. every news bulletin, 
talking about how we're doomed as a planet. But if you talk to Bob in our broth, the average person on the street, about net zero, about taxing meat, about not driving cars, about um, all manner of environment based issues. Most people don't give a hoot about this stuff and in fact don't even believe some of it. I, I, I'd really challenge that, Ian. And, you know, if you'd like to be convinced, I warmly invite you to come to North Herefordshire and come out door knocking with me. Well, I you're good you at door knocking. I'll give you that. You did 20,000. Yeah. So, you know, what you've just kind of been through a list of, of, to be honest, slightly kind of caricatured ideas of what the Greens stand for. That's really not the case. I mean, the first thing to say is I actually find many people say, you know, I'm not just voting for myself. I'm thinking of longer term. I'm thinking about my kids. I'm thinking about my grandchildren. I'm thinking about the next generation. People do want recognise that we need a politics that's got a bit of a kind of a wider range of thinking, you know, thinking longer term, not just kind of little gimmicks and, you know, tax breaks that actually aren't going to make a real difference to people, people's lives in the long term and the other thing is that you know it's completely wrong to say that the green party is just an environmental party yes concern for the natural world concern mm. for nature protection and strong climate action are central to our philosophy but fundamentally we're about creating a fairer society and that is something that especially in the context of the recent cost of living crisis and to be honest the utter crumbling of public services over the last 14 years under the conservatives people are really ready to to hear that message and recognize that the greens bring principles good ideas practical solutions to the political debate and things that we were talking about 30 years ago like yeah the need to tackle climate change are now utterly mainstream. You know, the vast majority of people recognise that we need to do that and and also recognise that that means we need more green politicians. But they, they, people to, to people like don't want to be bankrupt as a result of those policies. And I think that's perhaps where there's a, an, an issue. I know you're aware of the, the difficult balancing act, etc. What about, would you tax... Can red... I just pick you up, though? Sorry, Ian. Can I just Go pick on, you up on that? Because, again, you know, that is, that's a, such a kind of wrong way of looking at it. You know, we, we've had, like, incredibly respected economists telling us for decades that if we tackle the climate crisis sooner rather than later, it will be much cheaper for us in the long run. Let me give you just one example. You know, last year, I think it was the government spent £42 billion in one financial year propping up people's fuel bills because of the fuel price crisis. Mm -hmm. Imagine if we'd spent that money over the previous 10 years insulating people's houses so that the heat wasn't going out their chimneys, out their roofs, out their windows and doors, and instead staying in the houses and also not lining the pockets of the energy giants. You know, green ideas are really good investments for the long term. We shouldn't still be building houses that don't have solar panels on top and aren't well insulated. That is the thing that's a waste of money. So we need to recognise that investment in shifting our economy onto a more sustainable basis doesn't just make environmental mm. sense, it makes social and crucially economic sense too. So it's utterly false to kind of pretend that I, those two things listen, are I, I, you, you know, in, you get, in, in context. You'd get no argument from me on, on this government wasting money. You're, you're spot on about that in, in all sorts mm. of forms. Um, would you tax red meat? The uh, the green entrepreneur Dale Vince uh, came out today, uh, did an interview with The Sun and talked about how meat is absolutely central. And I know he's talked on this programme about it to the environmental problems we have. We're eating too much of the stuff. It's counterproductive. It's causing all sorts of issues. A tax on red meat was his suggestion. Uh, that sounds like a very Green Party policy, is it? As far as I'm aware, it's not. I have to confess, you know, I haven't read every single bit of Green Party policy and I can't kind of pull it out my pocket immediately. Would you tax red we, meat, though? Is that, is that, I mean, that, I, you're a vegetarian, I'm assuming? Well, actually, interestingly, I live on an organic farm where we grow our own animals. And so I am broadly vegetarian, but I do eat yeah. a little bit of meat that we produce ourselves. Okay. So, And I, you know, understand that for many people, that's part of, a, you know, part of their dietary choices. And that's fine. You know, the Greens are not about banning meat or anything like that. I think we've got an interesting kind of um, example where we think about um, uh, taxes on sugar. For example, you know, we, we may wish as a government to tax things that are, you know, demo demonstrably, demonstrably bad for people's health or potentially even bad for, bad for the planet. Mm. But, you know, I really don't think that taxing taxing red meat is part of green policy. Green Party policy, we need to have, you know, a wide set of policies that's about essentially taxing the things that are socially not great and investing in the things that are 
better for people. And that should be the underpinning policy for all of our tax and spending sure. decisions. OK, and just a final point. You said you live on a farm. Um, there's a lot of talk about electric cars, big conversion to electric cars. How is it out there in the sticks when you go electric? Uh, well, I do actually drive an electric car and uh, I charge it off solar panels where I live. But, you know, there is a real problem about investment in the infrastructure in the UK for EV charging. And anybody who drives an electric car will know that there's far too much variety in the, you know, the, the, the types of infrastructure and so forth. This is exactly what we need government to do, right, to make sure that the long term investment is there so that we've got the infrastructure to be able to transition to more okay. sustainable ways of doing transport, farming, you know, electricity, production and gen generation and distribution. And we know it, this really isn't rocket science. So many other countries have done it so much better. If you go to, in fact, many European countries, they've got far, far better things like EV charging infrastructure. So, you know, the, this is another example of our government essentially being asleep at the wheel. You know, they failed on home insulation. They failed to drive up housing standards. They've failed on the infrastructure investment that we need. And again, back to my key point, this is why we need more Green MPs elected to Westminster so that we can hold whatever colour government we okay. get, so that we can hold them to account, drive forward the sorts of policies that are good for people, good for planet, All right. good for sustainable economic development Listen, as well. Ellie, it's, it's thorough stuff and thank you for outlining uh, much of what uh, you stand for. Uh, good luck with the election as well. We may speak before then. Ellie, Ellie Chowns is a Green Party candidate.